Hey everyone, this is Reagan Canope. Welcome back to the Oregon Bridge. Since 2000, I think it was more of like national trend for the whole, like almost every state, kind of like leaning towards the blue. And then now we're getting those momentum back. It is very important to have rebranding our party first. So we're trying hard rebranding our whole state party image. I'm sure there's a lot of Oregonians, non-affiliated voters, even the Democrats, start to realizing what just happened to our state. The Oregon Republican Party is challenged. Victories in statewide elections are few and far between. Their last statewide victory was in 2016 with Dennis Richardson for Secretary of State. Republicans haven't had a U.S. senator in over a decade from Oregon and haven't won the governor's race in 36 years. Oregon used to be more competitive. Republicans had split or significant control in both legislative chambers through a lot of the 90s and into the 2000s. George W. Bush lost Oregon by less than a point in 2000 and came within five points in 2004. Then 2006 happened. First the minority, then the super minority for legislative Republicans. But things could be turning around. Republicans won the 5th Congressional District race for the first time since 1994, and they broke out of the super minority in the legislature. Christine Drazen ran the strongest election uh, for governor in over a decade for Republicans. And voter registration in some districts has started to move the Republican direction. I talked to Justin Huang. He's the chairman of the Oregon Republican Party. And uh, a few weeks ago, we chatted about um, what Oregon Republican Party is doing and what uh, is coming up next for Republicans and their opportunities in the election. I'm Reagan Canope, and this is the Oregon Bridge with Justin Huang, chairman of the Oregon Republican Party. Now that the legislative session is over, it's time for Oregon's activists, candidates, and political committees to turn their attention to the 2024 elections. With government regulation of political activities becoming more complicated nearly every year, and with political actors increasingly initiating complaints and litigation to achieve political goals, having experienced legal counsel has become critical to success in the political arena. Harang Long PC has represented clients involved in candidate and ballot measure elections for decades. To learn more about Harang Long's political law practice, check out our website at harang.com. That's www.harrang.com. Welcome back to the Oregon Bridge. Today we're joined by Justin Wong. He is the Oregon Republican Party chairman, and he's also a a, a business owner. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Justin. Thank you, Reagan. Thank you for having me today. I'm always wanted to be on your podcast, and I we kind of misplaced a couple of times before, but I really appreciate your invitation. I look forward to uh, talking to your audience. Well, we're really excited to have you, and I know the audience is interested because um, you are a, a key figure, obviously, in in Republican politics. The Oregon Republican Party um, has gone through right some ebbs and flows in terms of um, being successful, and then running into some challenges, right? And so, I think you're the perfect person to talk about uh, how you see things for the for the upcoming election. But first, for folks who don't know you, um, you're a business owner. Uh, and maybe just talk a little bit about that uh, to start with your background uh, and and your upbringing and then the business that you run. Yeah. So um, thanks for the question. And uh, I am a, I'll, I'll make it really brief. And uh, I am a Korean immigrant and uh, me and my family immigrated here uh, when I was um, four years old, five years old to L.A. in California. And we spent most of the time in the Pacific Northwest. And I, we moved to Oregon back in 2004 by opening a uh, first restaurant in Gresham, Oregon uh, called Joy Teriyaki. And since then, we're, um, we had tremendous uh, supports from the community. And we were able to uh, grow our company more than 30 restaurants. And we own few. We operate a few 
few for the our licensees and we keep going so i'm really appreciate all the help from this country and i think that is was that is a motivation uh, for me to be in, in the part of the Oregon politic for as a republican so um yeah that was, was be my next question is is how did you get involved in politics uh, as you already know, I mean, I think we met back in 2017, right? It's, it's time flies. <laughs> it really and does. I've, right. And I got more gray hairs now. And <laughs> that's, how, <laughs> that's what politics does it to you, right? Um, yeah, so I've been involved. Even the, before I started thinking about running for office, I was involved just being a businessman and having a small business in, in Oregon. Um, you get challenges. And there's so many red tapes and stopping you to grow because our job as I don't know what other business owner thinks, but my I honestly think my job is just providing and creating a job force and then hand over to our younger generation so then they can be uh, they can take over our job in the future. Right. But there's so many red tapes blocking that process so i i was thinking i was involved with so many other nonprofit organizations as well you know i'm with like korean war veteran association uh legacy hospital foundation board you know some others but i started thinking about i want to do more i actually wanted to get involved with the people with the same mindset trying to change things and that is one of the biggest reasons i threw my head in the ring back in 2018 election I ran for I ran for state representative in the House District 49. Um, it is heavily Democratic district. I think it was plus 14D. I think I lost by four points, give and take. And the losing was it my first time losing in the election. That was kind of like giving me a reality check. It was hard, just getting recovered from the loss, because. I know uh, there are so many other candidates that ran, ran for office. I'm I'm pretty sure they went through the same, same um, path just because I know how much work they put in for two years and year and a half or also because they got to give up their life. So that kind of got me in the maybe like half a year break. And then now I was like, wait a minute. My salon, the same challenger, or not the challenger, the same person I ran, ran against He's now running for Senate. So I have learned a lot of skills. And because when I first ran for office, I had no knowledge, no network. I think you were there and you gave me kind of a lot of give advice here and there at the beginning. But I was like green, like I had no idea. But after I ran my first office and first campaign, I, I thought, I think, and I gained a lot of knowledge. Uh, why don't I give another shot? So I ran for Senate in uh, Senate District 25, which I don't know if you remember. Um, mm -hmm. Against uh, and, Senator Gorsuch. Now. Senator Gorsuch, yeah. And then um, that was another plus 12 um, Democrat district. And I think I lost by 2.5 um, within the margin of error. And yeah, the second one is like, all right, this is not my direction. Maybe, and after I lost, my second elections and I always keep thinking, what can I do to, what can I do to just get involved, help the candidate be in the community? And cause I didn't want to give up. Once you're a Republican, I want to be a forever Republican. I want to be an asset for the Republican party, even the county levels, state party levels, but I've been involved somewhat, involved with some of the county Republicans, but I got a call from, um, some of the people around me and saying, hey, you know, uh, there's a vice chair and the, at the state party is vacant. Um, they uh, I, I can bring, they were thinking I can bring those skill set that I have learned from two past election cycles. So I was like, all right, let's do it. So I ran and I won my vice chairmanship and um, in May of 2022. Actually, it's not that long. It sounds like forever, but it's about a year and a half ago. And all of a sudden, my chairman resigned, <laughs> right? You know, that was Jul end of July. That was kind of out of the blue. So I became a chair. 
So it was more challenging at the time just because we're in the election election year and I was barely at the vice chair and became a chair taking over all this different program was going on. At the same time, we had to manage those campaigns supporting our congressional candidates. So, but we did our best and I started making a lot of trips uh, to other states to uh, raise money. I think we have raised about $600,000 uh, give and take um, from since I became a chair in July and at, until the end of the election year, which is like uh, November 10th, uh, November 8th. And um, after that, I was off re-election in February. And luckily, I was able to hold my position for another two years. I don't know if uh, my wife is happy about it, but I'm happy to be uh, part of the history. Yeah, the so, state, uh, for those who aren't familiar, the state Republican Party has a, a reorganizational meeting every two years. And at that meeting, they elect the chair, the vice chair, the treasurer, secretary, and um, maybe a couple of delegates, if I'm remembering right. And so they, right. they select so all the county parties do this. The individual counties do it and they have to do it before the state meeting. And then they send all their delegates from the local meetings to the state reorganization meeting. And that's where they pick the chair. So you were the vice chair. And then, as you said, you got, uh, you know, your chair resigned. And so that elevated you to the chairmanship. And mm -hmm. after that, then you had to seek, you know, reelection for a new term as chairman. And any chairman that wants to serve has to do that every two years if they want to continue to serve. So just some background for our listeners. Um, I don't know if the Democratic Party system is the same in how they choose their chair, but that's that's the uh, Oregon Republican Party system that that you and I are familiar with. So thank you for so the explanation. You know absolutely. The yeah. Uh, the And so then kind of my next question is um, your my context, my thought on, in terms of explaining this to listeners is, OK, way, way, way back in 2000. Oregon is very competitive at the presidential level. You've got George Bush and Al Gore. Um, Bush almost won Oregon, uh, barely lost it. And then same thing again in 04, very, very close election with Bush and Kerry. Sort <clears throat> of after that, the Republican Party, at least at the, you know, nationally, we weren't super competitive, but we had very competitive legislative elections. Um, and then slowly Democrats started, you know, winning more of those elections and have had pretty significant majorities past couple of years we were in the super minority and now we're just starting to push our way out of the super minority um and and is kind of are, are, are looking at trying to be ascendant a again what kind of a role do you think that the republican the oregon republican party organization plays in you know trying to help that you know what are the goals of the oregon republican party um and and how do they help win elections yeah, of course, I remember those era. And then I think uh, since 2000, early 2000, I think it was more of like national trend for the whole, like almost every state's kind of like leaning towards the blue. And you're right, you know, and then now we're getting those momentum back. And most likely, I mean, we're trying to get those capacity back from by winning some of their seat more. And you just pointed out that we were barely getting out of the super minority, right? So there was a lot of efforts. And so when I uh, became a chair, so I had to find a resource and any tools to help the party, which is there was a lot of um, disconnections, I believe, with the state party and the caucus. And then we tried to bring those relationships back. So then collaboration is always the key, I think and the communication, uh, which is like, I've been talking to Senator Knob a lot and I've been talking to uh, Vicky Iverson and just to having those regular conversation and cause we are the same team, we're not competing. And I wanna put in the same package, even though going through, um, I think first plan is, uh, let's start with this. For the party wise, I think we're very, it's, it is very important to have rebranding our party first uh, just because the state of Oregon has, um, first, we, we don't have finance limits. So the can, so the lobby or the, a lot of donors can straight to go to the candidates. 
to make a donations or for the elected officials or the caucus is up to them. So we don't really have those circulation of donations. So we're trying to be as acting like a PR company of those candidates or those donors, making sure because we gotta be local, we gotta have a good name, good image, so that we that their whatever their money spend on the candidates will not go into waste. So we're trying hard getting those rebranding our whole state party image by messaging and uh for as grassroots and and uh, a lot of collaborations with other minority groups so that's our plan one and sec second plan is we're doing a lot of um just i was telling you earlier uh we we, we are regularly talking to the caucus right now just to making sure uh we just talk about um candidate uh, recruitment because we want to have make sure we want to make sure we want to have a quality candidates which is like that's the most things the most things we're looking for in the candidates and the second thing is we don't want those two three hundreds of candidates fighting each other in the primary that's my take i mean they have all the rights to run for office but my take is we want to get involved in this uh candidate recruitment so then they don't have to waste their time and the money of much of their time so then they have more resources to fight in the primary at the um, general elections so that's another thing we're currently working on and we are more on the other hand we are the state party is more of um, charge of handling managing a campaign for the congressional uh, races which is like first thing we are trying to do right now. I mean, we have signed called Rule uh, Rule Eleven, which is uh, preventing any um, preventing a primary for um, Clay Pence and and Lori Travis Dreamer, uh, just to making sure because we want to protect those seats, no matter what happens. Because we picked a Lori since um, just last year, and he has been a Democratic since nineteen ninety four. It's going to be heavily targeted from Democrat side, and we want to make sure that he can reserve those funding and they go on full on 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 the general elections. So far as that, that, that makes sense because you have a very close majority in the U.S. House of Representatives, and mm -hmm. uh, Lori Chavez Dreamer seat specifically uh, is one of those seats that you want to have in order to keep that majority, and it's going to be targeted nationally, right? So making sure. For the Oregon Republican Party perspective, you want to make sure that that is the strongest possible uh, run for Lori as a as an incumbent, which means not having to fend off any challengers and and stuff like that. So that makes sense. Yeah, there was I, there was a big win, honestly. That otherwise we wouldn't have this, we we wouldn't gonna have this much attention from the national level, and then. Uh, we've been getting a lot of uh, resource from the RNC right now. Uh, I think we just got another. Uh, I'm not, I don't think it's correct number, but it's nearly about $190,000 just from the RNC, just to, uh, we can use that money for our federal programs. Wow. And, and I think after by picking a one more seat, we've been getting so many calls and so many supports on Oregon. It's not the same Oregon anymore. And then I am really excited for a uh, city six, the See, I can see this. We had Mike Erickson uh, ran last year. Mm -hmm. I am very much, uh, well, I'm very much excited for their race because I think we lost very, lost by very small, mar small margin. So we got to, I think there's going to be another targeted race. And of course, the city comes along. And um, I think we are by, I think it's step by step. I think if we can pick one more seat and we're going to be um, even congressional in Oregon. I don't think that never happened. Uh, um, that never ha ever happened before, right, Reagan? I I know you more. You know, the I I would have to look that up. But it's it's been. I mean, you had Walden there for by himself for years. Before that, you mm -hmm. had uh, you referenced CD five had been in Republican hands before uh, ninety four. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was uh, maybe it might have been Denny Smith. Uh, and so we've had two before, but I'm not sure that we've ever been in the majority of the U.S. House. Um, mm -hmm. so that I would definitely have to check on that, but yeah, I mean, decades since Republicans decades. have yeah. been that effective and that, that well represented in Congress. Right. And then we're going to have SOS race, uh, which is where we have a lot of, um, uh, I think we're going to have a lot of quality candidates that, uh, throw their head in the ring pretty soon. 
and then we already have uh, a G uh, candidate. Uh, I think his first name was Will. I forget his last name. Yeah, we have Will. But, uh, we had Will Lathrop on the program recently. He is a Republican candidate for um, Attorney General. Yeah, I have, have met him last year, and I think he has a decent chance of winning, and he's very smart. And I probably, we probably had to um, talk to him more um, about how we can help. But as a state party, I want to make myself clear as a party, we can really endorse anyone in the primary. If there's an, another Republican candidate that comes up as AG, we have to be a neutral. Yeah, that is, uh, you find that to be one of the challenges because you, you obviously have a lot of rank and file um, members who on their own are able to go out and help different candidates in different campaigns. But as a party apparatus, kind of like you're seeing at the federal level with the presidential primary, the party has to be neutral and create a platform basically for candidates. And then the party gets behind the candidate that like, gets selected in the primary, right? And yes, so that's right. very similar thing at the state level. Perfect. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, so I think that is our plans for um, getting ready for a uh, big year. So there's uh, going to be excitement. So that's awesome. And then um, if you are making the pitch to a non affiliated voter on why they should either become a Republican or at the very least, um, Consider Republican candidates in uh, the next November uh, election here coming up in 2024. What's your pitch on why um, they ought to vote Republican instead of, uh, you know, either staying home and not voting or voting for Democrats? What uh, what's kind of your pitch to Oregonians on why they ought to vote Republican? So my biggest pitch is um I'm sure there's a lot of Oregonians, non-affiliated voters, even the Democrats, start to realizing what that just what just uh, just ha happened to our state. The homelessness gets never fixed, and then drug uses, uh, school choices, and all these prob problematic issues that has never been fixed under the more than two decades of democratic control. And now that people are awaking, and my pitch is, if they want to see less homeless, if they want to, they they want their tax dollars to go in the right place and right program to help their children, they should rethinking about who they have to vote for. We have given enough time to those democratic control governments and never been changed. I think it is nine. It is now time for. Those all the non-affiliated voters and Democrats give a chance to the Republican people, Republican candidates to make changes. I think that is uh, my pitch just because the problems that we've been facing every goddamn day never been fixed. Awesome. Uh, anything else that you want to add, uh, Justin, uh, and let people know about what the Oregon Republican Party is working on? Yes, so we're so we're this is more of the event space. Uh, we're trying to be more active uh, by doing a lot of those other small events, big events. But our next one is um, from the Washington County. We have a Reagan dinner. It's on this coming Saturday, and <laughs> it's one of the biggest Reagan dinner they have been been doing for uh, years and years. And I think that's going to be another way for our fellow uh, Republicans to the network and with people to what they have there in mind and to share their po political ideas. And another big one is coming up in October, uh, October 19th through 22nd, I believe. It is our biggest event as a Republican party, which is the platform convention. And we have uh, most of Every elected official will come, and then we're going to talk about the platforms. But also, we're providing uh, training sessions, uh, which is like um, the steps from RNC is flying over here. We do candidate trainings, and then we do a lot of trainings of like uh, what we have to do to win, the, win Oregon. So it is open for everyone um, uh, to, to come to those kind of events. So... Um, the one of the biggest reasons we're doing the training is because we want more people to get involved with the uh, state party or the county parties. 
So I think those training, we're going to be continue to do so. Uh, not even the like those platform conventions. So we'll be uh, uh, giving out the resource and then uh, date and time or at or the work on GOP.com to um, making sure the people has uh, more resource to the party. So I wish whoever has uh, questions or getting involved, please join us. Uh, and I'm sure there's uh, other county chairs who will love to help the other people to join in the party. So uh, my door is always open. And if there's any concerns, shoot me an email, call me, text me. And uh, now I'm sure we can do a lot better than every year. And then I'm really excited for 2024. And there's more exciting news that will come up. And please stay tuned. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. And uh, if people want to learn more about the Oregon Republican Party, your guys' website is Oregon.gop. Is that right? I think that is it. Awesome. And uh, they're on, you know, Twitter and Facebook and all the all the social media. So, well, Justin, we really uh, appreciate your time coming in and just giving a a quick update to our listeners. And uh, if you've got anything else to share or any big updates, feel free to come back on the on the podcast anytime. Perfect. Will do next time. I'll bring you better news and the good news next time. Thank you for having me, Megan. And thank you, everyone. (laughs) All right. Appreciate it. Bye bye.